Hi, it's Lila. Thanks for joining me for episode 6 of my vlog, Solo Concert Goer. In this episode, I'm going to be reviewing Black Bear and Maroon 5's show at PNC Bank Arts Center in New Jersey. When I found out that Black Bear and Maroon 5 were going to do a show together or a tour together, it was a no-brainer. I had to go and I had to get a great seat. Luckily, at this venue, there were seated areas um, and there was also a lawn, but I grabbed one of the seated spots. And even though it was seated, once the show started, everybody was standing up and we were having a very big party, dancing around. Um, so yeah, like, I mean, I think this was like one of my more enjoyable experiences when it comes to not having to stand in the line and still having like an amazing spot in front. Um, definitely love that. Before the show, I met two girls, Paige and Grace, and I'm super, super grateful that we got to meet because it totally changed how my whole night went. We hung out so much before the concert started, and they were just extremely fun. The crazy thing is, I've only really known about Black Bear for probably less, probably less than a year. Uh, I discovered him when I listened to Mansions which is his project with Mike Posner and from there on uh, obviously heard him a lot in his song with Machine Gun Kelly and so many other collaborations song after song just fell in love with everything that he writes one of my favorite artists right now and as for Maroon 5 it was super fun for me to think back to how I discovered Maroon 5. I was like 13 when songs about Jane came out or had already been out, but that's the point when I heard it. I'm not too sure. So that's like 2007, I think. And it is super special to think back because I saw like... I saw their album and their ad when I went to a movie with friends and I remember it to this day. It was like the, the promo video for songs about Jane and I just remember like absolutely being obsessed with them. First time that I heard them, um, She Will Be Loved was a massive, massive hit at that point and I was like in school then and I was like enrolled in like after school programs just to say it like it is I had parents who didn't want me home and I didn't want to be home either so I spent so much time at school even when school was done and I vividly recall spending so much time in the girls bathroom after school just sitting there singing the songs from that album to myself and to other friends who were in a similar position to me when we were just like bored out of our minds having to still be at school because our parents didn't want us home so yeah like I have pretty deep feelings and memories when it comes to Maroon 5 and so amazing that they have consistently put out amazing songs over the years I super went crazy wild when Black Bear came on stage and at one point I was headbanging, <laughs> which is not a good thing. Like, I definitely felt it, like, for a good two days after the show. But it just happened. It just happened. There, he, he just, his lyrics are, uh, he writes in a way that he says these shocking things in such a nonchalant manner. So, you know, I think when artists write that way that's when their lyrics are the most universal because they're saying the things that people think but don't want to say out loud and so when I had the opportunity to hear his songs in person like I screamed extra loud at the parts that really really resonated with me Thank you. 
I was very surprised at Maroon 5's stage. It really reminded me of a high school play. I have no idea why they chose certain things to to have on the stage. Um, there were like c cars that had smoke com coming out of the hoods. That that was cool, but the rest was like just like plastic flowers and a horse head or something. It was super weird to me. I was like, am I seeing Maroon 5 or a high school play? But once they came out and all the lights did the, their thing, it kind of looked cool. Every single song was magical. I mean, they have so many hits. We were all just, I was lucky to be around people who were as into it as I was. So yeah, all the strangers next to me, we were all dancing, all singing so loudly. And yeah, I mean, it was super fun. I think that it's been my favorite show that I've attended in this journey so far. I don't know if it's because of the songs being so fun and energetic and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It was just, it just, I felt super present. I was in my element. Um, so I'm so, so happy that I went. It was very cool to see the guitarist's outfit because I feel like he's been wearing that type of clothes ever since the band came out. It was, it felt, it felt really nostalgic. <laughs> While I enjoyed every song being super fast-paced and dance-like and yeah, just a lot going on, instrumentally speaking, while I really loved it, it just totally made me so happy when they did a few songs acoustically, especially She Will Be Loved. They did like the first two parts of it acoustically before the other instruments joined in. When it's just the lead singer and an acoustic guitar, when the song is simplified, stripped to its bare bones and it's still a banger and you still get all the feels, that's to me one of the most greatest things to experience, just to be reminded that this massive hit song was just written with an acoustic guitar and that that's how songs start and um, just to know that every song has the potential to go way beyond just you and your guitar playing but yeah I it made it made it so special for me to experience that song in such a simplified manner. I think another special thing that I walked away with that night, special to me as an artist and as a musician, was the fact that the very last song they performed, which is always very special, you know, um, they saved Sugar for the final song. And why this is so amazing to me is because I know that song was written by Mike Posner. Not only is Mike Posner a very special artist to me, but 
Also, just the fact that this massive band, Maroon 5, is ending the night with a song written by a different artist and I'm pretty sure 99% of the people in the audience does not know the backstory and does not know that this song was not written by Maroon 5. So as a writer, it's yeah, it's amazing to see that you might not always be the one performing the song, but your song has the capacity and ability to be such a massive hit and special song for a different band. So this far, it's been my favorite concert. We'll check in in the final episode in a few weeks from now to see if this still is my favorite show. Next, I'm going to see Machine Gun Kelly in Central Park and Pier 17. I'll check back in with you after that.